like, this is so gay. It was, like, the first line. <laughs> it was, like, Glyde McQueen was, like, all these cars are so gay. Wow. Whoa. Whatever he says. <laughs> That's crazier than gay lizards. Hey. hey. <laughs> what? People be allowed. Damn. Okay. Um. So, three count. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. This is 2004, a podcast hosted by two guys who were alive in 2004, but weren't burned that year. 2004, podcast I've seen, hosted by Jeff and Bobby DeVore. What's up, what's up, what's up? Nope. Welcome to 2004 Podcast Sucks. I'm Javon Gordon. I'm Bobby DeVore. <coughs> I know we haven't been... Uh, continue. We haven't been around for a while. Uh, we've been around for two years, man. I mean, in terms of... We took a, a while off. We had a hiatus. We have the most inconsistent schedule of all time. No, we don't. Not at all. We're, we're pretty poignant. We're pretty weekly to bi weekly. <laughs> Am I misusing that? Yes. Ah, oh, gee, what does poignant mean? I think okay. it means something emotional. I thought, what's the thing that's like racist? Like when it's like a word for something when something's racist. Like, is that poignant? Mm, no. There's a there's a word I've used recently that's like a poignant type of word. Like a poignant. <laughs> I don't know. Touch. Poignant means evoking a keen, G. Poignant means evoking a keen sense of sadness or regret. Oh uh, yeah. I just you keep mean using pretty poignant. uh pretty consistent. No, you mean yes consistent, but like so oh, there is a word that starts with a P that means like to be on time. Oh, that's not what I'm. Punctual. Yeah, punctual. You is meant that punctual. racist? What? No. <laughs> no, no, I. I was confusing poignant with something else. I think it was like in the same day when somebody explained to me that I was using poignant wrong. That there's also like, it was some other word that like, I don't remember to be honest with you, but it wasn't punctual. It, the word that I was mistaking poignant or whatever this word was, meant actually like something will racist. This, will the noise around us get in the podcast? Uh, Is it registering? Uh, it's registering. It's not like super, super audible. Oh. Our voices are more audible. All right. Our voices are more honorable. Uh, you might not be wrong about we that. We are knights of the round table. I don't know. Um, welcome back to the show, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to turn the gain up a bit. Uh, I can't tell if that like helped or made it worse. I have no idea. Well, okay. I think that actually. Yeah, I think that did help. I turned the gain down. We can edit that out. Well, this is maybe an episode where we talk about stuff that's happened recently. Yeah, this is a. We're gonna talk about Brett Kavanaugh and the hearings that happened last week. We're going to talk about Brett Favre? No, nothing happened with him, so why would we talk about him? Explain yourself. I, w- I don't know. I'm, I still think it's funny to say Brett Favre. I'm still coasting off of that. Uh, What's that dude's name from Mad TV? Frank Caliendo? Who? Yeah, Frank Caliendo. <laughs> you got to say it like he says it in an impersonation of, of, Jan- of John Madden. Of J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> Just like I don't think those voices going off the words long. that I said, in in like saying a different word doesn't is not funny. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. All right, I think that's the, on the same level as your joke earlier. Yeah, but they didn't hear that joke, so it doesn't uh, matter. <laughs> okay. 
All right. He heard of Jay Potter. Who? The, your God that doesn't exist? <laughs> Why you gotta be a dick? <laughs> Why you gotta Grow act up. like we watch Rick and Morty? Grow up. <laughs> Dude, I was talking to one of my classmates, and she was telling me she works at, um, do you know box lunches? No. I didn't either, but it's like a hot topic, but for like older people, apparently. It's like a, it's a... It's a pop culture? Yeah. Um, and she was telling me about how terrible it is, like, every day, every shift, there's, like, one Rick and Morty fuck that comes in and touches the, touches the plush and does the thing. What? Oh, is there a Pickle Rick plush? You have to say that. (laughs) I I don't think I have to. No. You You put it together. You could, but you can explain yourself. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But you put it together, so it made sense. You have to rely upon my ability to put things together. <laughs> so, okay. No, you're right. I need to think about being on the show more. Um, today, at least. Um, um, that's terrible. What? <laughs> that is terrible. It's a good episode, but... Uh, that part wasn't funny to me. It, it was, was funny the first time. It was funny at first. Didn't it get released? Like, that was like a promotional thing where. Yeah, that was before even the episode aired. That was kind of funny. Yeah. It wasn't funny in the episode because I already knew it. Yeah, exactly. Like, it wasn't super funny. Yeah. Like, you were kind of like waiting for it, you know? Yeah. It's like, I can't wait to accept the thing. That was how people actually were. And now it's become a thing for them. Yeah, and now they're like, oh, Rick. Did they just yell Pickle Rick at each other? Or, no, that's Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, when they see, like, yeah. a fucker. No, it's just, that's the thing Rick says once in the episode. No, 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 I'm saying, like, the fans. I was wondering if, like, they see... They probably yell both. Yeah, it's probably interchangeable yeah. for them. Wubba Lubba Dub, Pickle Rick? Yeah, they, both, they probably do they both. They probably do both in the same breath like that, you know? They yeah. probably combine it. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub Rick? Wubba Lubba Rick? You're talking about the uh, portion of the Rick and Morty demographic that has a speech impediment, oh, shit. which you're pretty accurate about. Probably. I mean, Rick and Morty's fans are nerds, but it's also a lot of mainstream fans. Man. Not everybody that has a speech impediment is a nerd. Yeah, they are. <laughs> no. Not a single cool person <laughs> has a speech impediment. Uh, what about the fathers? Also, all cool, only nerds have acne. <laughs> Bad eyesight. Yeah. Scoliosis. <laughs> are fat. <laughs> Stink. <laughs> you know, say what you want about America's obese population, but look at our test scores. <laughs> Even though they're both, like, really bad. Exactly. Um, Especially in the state where we're recording this. Oh, yeah. Actually, Infamously bad. Really? No. Um, Pretty bad, though. Mm. Do you know? Like, I don't know. I'm like, just, all I've heard, ever heard about test scores is that they're bad in oh, the state. In this state? Yeah. In this state or in this state? What do you, what, you just point it to the roof and then to the table. I don't know what that means. Yeah, the state that's higher than us? No, the state. That above this state? This state. Kentucky. Oh, okay. Or no, just maybe. Louisville, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I feel like Louisville would have pretty good test store, scores compared to the rest of it the may be, state. Uh, look it up. I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, I was, yeah, Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Now, yeah. I don't, don't want to stay on this too much because it is a dark topic. It sucks. And everyone's talked about it already. Yeah. It but, sucks. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Sucks. Is a judge douchebag who was trying, who got nominated by the Trump administration to uh, fill a seat in the Supreme Court mm-hmm. by a dude because the dude was retiring. Yeah. Well, he's stepping down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and well, I guess he is retiring. Yeah. But didn't he do that just to, like, help? I don't remember why he wasn't did it. Wasn't that, like, wasn't there a controversy over it? I don't remember. Oh. And, uh... And this dude, uh... <laughs> uh... Was already an asshole. He had yeah. asshole views. We knew. He, he wants to help... Re- he's gonna... Basically, repeal Roe v. Wade. Yeah. Um, and, uh, with the help of the current administration. But then, Not him solely, but he's then, like... Uh, the allegations last. came out. Nail in the coffin. Uh, 
by a woman that he went to high school with. Mm-hmm. No, not went to high school with. It was high school. Yeah, but like high school at the same time. Not they didn't go to high school the same high school. Oh, they were both high school kids. Yeah. Oh, because he went to an all boys school. Yeah. Okay. And he was a senior. She was like fifteen when it happened. Jesus. Uh, he was like seventeen, eighteen, something like that. Yeah. And uh, in the early eighties. Mm-hmm. Now this allegation that came out when he first got nominated. But the but the lady, the senator that had it, that had it, uh, Feinstein kept it. Wait, 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 wait. Until very recently. Your words don't make sense. The senator, okay. She, when she heard that he got nominated. Who? For the Supreme Court. Who? The accuser, uh, Christine Bowsey Ford. Oh, yeah. When she heard he got nominated. He, she um, reported the story to a senator named... I think Donna Feinstein. Okay. I'm looking it up. It may not be Donna Feinstein. Um, uh, and she kept it until very recently. And she Feinstein. Yes. Okay. Diane. Is it Diane Feinstein? Yeah, it's Diane Feinstein. She's a Democratic senator. Mm-hmm. She kept it until very recently. Uh, and the allegation was that at a party... Uh, on a weekend in like 1982, 1983, something mm-hmm. like that, uh, at one of the, at one of Kavanaugh's friend's house that both she and, both he and, uh, Ford were at, he attempted to rape her at yeah. the party. <clears throat> he and one of his friends. Yes. Uh, Mark Judge is his name. He's not a judge. He's not. He is a... Well, he is a judge. He's a, like, like extremely creepy, drunken, racist asshole. That came out against him, right? No. Oh, they just, like, talked to the dude? They are trying to talk to him. Okay. <clears throat> uh, she says he was there. Yeah. Uh, and also, two other allegations have since come out about against Kavanaugh. Like, of similar stuff? Yeah, of similar sexual okay. assault type stuff. Don't another, have... I don't know the third one, but another one involves him, like, exposing his penis to a drunk girl at a party. Uh, do you know if there were witnesses to, like, have they called in witnesses, like, yeah. of, from the party? Yeah. Okay. They say they don't, they don't remember, some of them have been, like, their memory's kind of hazy about it. Well, yeah, I mean, this was... But also, plenty of people can te- testify have testified that, like, for, Kavanaugh was a sloppy jockey. It's not out of his character. Yeah, it was not out of character for high school Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. To be a j- sloppy, like, shitty, mean, drunk yeah. type of asshole. And, I mean, Mark Judge wrote a book called Wasted Tales of a Generation X... Uh, yeah. Uh, drunk, alcoholic, something like that. Yeah. Where he he fictionalized Bray mm-hmm. by just by just changed his name to Bart. That's literally all he did. He <laughs> shares the same last name, but still Kavanaugh. Bart he didn't Kavanaugh. even change the last name. Damn, dude. What a way to like throw your friend under Great the Great writing. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, first off. But I like, mean, even oh. if you're going to fictionalize real people, people have done that all. That's, yeah, yeah. That's like, a long tradition of literature. But, like, like, Hunter S. Thompson changed his own name to Dr. Gonzo. Yeah. At least he changed his name. Yeah. You change, You just changed Brett to Bart. Yeah. Like, what? At least it wasn't Bert. Also, Bart on The Simpsons is like a... I forget, what's the word term? Anagram? Yeah, I think it's an anagram for Brat, I believe. Uh, is I it an anagram? The, no, I don't is think it? that's the correct word. Um, I know what you're saying, though. Antonym? I'm a, 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 a. I'm looking up uh, what that means on The Simpsons. Oh, okay. I don't... I think... Did you figure out Feinstein's name? Yeah. Diane Feinstein. Oh, okay. So you had it right. Yeah. All right. Huh. Um. Uh, all right. Whatever. Uh, what was I... What 
What was I? Uh, <laughs> I think we got all of that, too, and I'm excited about it. Um, you were talking about um, the part, oh, yeah, Brett the, Kavanaugh being the changed to Bart in the book. And there's also, like, different... Um, who in the book he's described as a sloppy drunk yeah. that pukes on himself in a in a car like yeah. like wow <laughs> just his his college freshman year roommate said yeah this is, this sounds about right around that same time Jesus. like bunch of people also it it all of this and also uh, in his yearbook there was a page that said something about uh uh. Alumni of Renata. He, Brett, and a bunch of other classmates were called themselves the alumni of Renata. In like what, like their yearbook. Like how, like it, like just a bunch of pictures of them as a group, and then it said alumni of of, of Renata. So like, was one of them in the what? The <laughs> was one, was one of them in like yearbook, like the class? Most likely. Okay. Was it like it wasn't like their senior quote or anything? No. It? Okay. I forget his senior quote. I oh, think that's yeah. out there, too. Yeah, it is. Because uh, I heard about his senior quote or something about it Yeah, being brought up. Um, uh, but the uh, Renata was a girl they all knew. Yeah. I think implying that they all had sex for her or something. Yeah. When she didn't know about it until this sto- until all this stuff about him in high school came out. Yeah. Well, that may- I didn't put that together earlier when you told me this, but they went to separate schools. Yeah. Because he went to an all-boys school. So, yeah. Um, that makes sense for her to not know. Like, like... Yeah, that's great. He's just... It's crazy when people fit into types so well. And Brett Kavanaugh fits every part of preppy, jock, drunken, fratty asshole type. Like, See, here's the thing. is like, I already... No, and, I know. We know. We both know people like this. But yeah, it's like, yeah. it's crazy when people fit into this shit so well. <laughs> no, not to me, man. Because, uh, dude, and maybe it's, like, being on a college campus and, like, like I see it everywhere, man. Like, I've seen it everywhere. Yeah. And, like, you know, that would have been me. No, I'm, not, I'm saying that plenty of people. Yeah, we know people like this. And we know that yeah. a lot of, like, types and fiction come from real life shit. Yeah. But it's still, to me, crazy when people fit it to a T like that. Like, to a, like, art, like a character type yeah. in media yeah when like, you're the archetypal yeah like, version of something yeah it's you crazy gotta, you gotta get your phone away from the mic man i can only do so much this yeah is i know but like we got we could take steps for this like to prevent this it's crazy like you got a whole lot of room to move stop your body <laughs> well oh yeah i forget you don't have a wheelie chair like i do no you have a you have a legged chair. You have a shitty normal chair. <laughs> no, dude, fuck you, man. My chair's paralyzed. <laughs> it has wheels. Is that fu- that's fucked up, isn't it? That's not a good joke. I'm sorry. Uh, that's fine. I don't really care. <laughs> I just I care. I, I want to be a better person. Yeah, I'm gonna be the bad one. I will say all the problematic jokes. <laughs> yeah, he will. And Even brush if they it, don't land. Brush it off my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Man gives no care about being rude. Hey, I, I will. I won't say it to the people. I'll say behind the backs. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a gentleman. But, yeah. Like a decent human being. <laughs> um, so. Uh, My lady. <laughs> you do have the beard. <laughs> I can say that. Also, you got a beard. Yeah, I have the beard. I have a neck beard, like hella hard. Yeah. I mean, my beard actually grows in well. <laughs> yeah. At least I can shave, though. Check me. You better sleep with both eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> you better sleep with both <laughs> eyes open tonight. All right. Um, but like, so the decision's been pushed back. Uh, yeah, Jeff Flake, a senator, uh, uh, who still voted yes on him. Yeah. To confirm him, despite the fact that they had a testimony. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows this. Why are we talking about things everyone knows? I don't know why I thought this. Uh, but anyways. He said there's going to be a week-long FBI, FBI investigation. investigation, and then they'll make the official, official vote. Yeah. Um, have we learned anything about the FBI investigation? Currently? Yeah. And how it's progressing? Yeah. 
I don't know. Or are they just gonna release it all at once? Damn, these people look like kids. Holy yeah. shit. But probably freshmen? Yeah, dude, I'm just old, man. Yeah. It's hit me this semester, though. Yeah. Like, on up until this semester, freshmen have looked kind of like me. And now I feel like such an old dude. You're an old creepy bastard. Pretty much, man. Like, see what I'm saying? Like, they look like children. <laughs> hmm. Anyways. <laughs> Ooh, what were we gonna talk about that? You were talking about that Ghost World article you sent me? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm a major fan of, or I was, a major fan of Ghost World. Um, the movie, um, I've read the comic. I can't, I've seen the movie more so than I've read the comic. Um, also, reading's hard for Bobby. <laughs> uh, Ghost World's one of those movies. You ever have a movie that you genuinely love? Yeah. But you've only seen it, like, maybe two or three times. Like, you, it's kind of like a... Yeah. Like, you look at it kind of rose-tinted. Yeah. You know? Um, it's a movie that... I think because it encapsulates, like, a feeling in me. Or, like, a feeling I had as a younger me. So well. Like, that, that sort of, like... You know, graduating high school... Dismissive teenager shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a, it's meaningful to have You want me to explain Ghost World? Sort of articulated for you. I mean, you can if you want. Or do you want to do it? It's your movie. <laughs> I mean, I, here's the thing. The comic differs from the movie, and all the... Both were written by the same. No, he didn't write it. Yeah, he wrote on the movie. He wrote on the movie, but he didn't write the screenplay. There's major changes... Yeah, but he still wrote on the movie. Like he helped, like and yeah. they he he still wrote on the movie. He made they he may have helped them change some of the stuff, but it's still the yeah he yeah. Still but wrote like on the movie. I just I like the comics story a little more yeah um, than the movies, but um, and they're like major plot changes. Um, yeah, it doesn't mean that he didn't write on it just because there's plot changes. Yeah, but like I looking at his original idea compared to what the movie turned out to be. Um, this is you're arguing an opinion. I'm talking about a fact. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Like he probably did write on it. Yeah, I just or he said. probably like helped change the things. But what I'm saying is that I'm going with the original idea more so. Um, like I don't know, man. It's just a one of those movies you sort of also I've, since I've only seen it like two, maybe three times. It's a movie. Do you want to explain it to them? I'm (laughs) trying to get to the point that I can't explain the fucking movie, dude. Shit. Let me fucking talk. There you go. I'm done. I just said it. Fucking talk now. All right, anyway. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to interrupt you when you're trying to get ideas out. All right, go. (laughs) It was standstill here. (laughs) Continue, man. All right. Ghost World is a movie that Bobby's seen a couple of times and he's solved growth in the glass. Anyways, it's a movie that was originally like an alternative comic book in the ni- in the late 90s. No, the uh, it was the early 90s. The well, movie was 90s. made in 99, dude. It was right. made in 99, came out in like 2000, 2001. Alright. Uh, it, um, it's a movie about like two teenage girls just kind of go, who are just like just graduating high school, right? And they're just kind of dismissive of everything. Yeah. And just kind of like flippant, irreverent teenagers that view everything with an ironic distance. And the movie's very, uh, very, to me, very clearly Generation X. Yeah. I mean, it, it does, like, the feeling of being flippant and irreverent about everything is kind of very teenager, no matter what the generation. Yeah, but I think it, like, gets real real broad in the 90s I would say that's like very common in the 90s oh it's it's deeply entrenched in the feeling of the 90s yes yeah like there's a because like alternative like alternative uh sort of media and alternative sort was of, everywhere yeah that was the that was the 90s like even the jocks were like in the at least Obama. the youth culture yeah it wasn't everything it was the youth culture but yeah. youth culture is everything so. yeah pretty much yeah when do you age out of youth culture? Probably like your 30s. I feel like when you become a parent. Probably. You know what I'm saying? Like when you like own a home, I think you're like no longer. Uh, 
I keep okay. <laughs> We're in a library, and like the view I have is of like bookcases, and every once in a while, people will walk around the bookcases. Yeah. But consistently today, I have seen two people come around the corner at the same time, and I just imagine a meet cute happening in front of my eyes. <laughs> Behind the bookcases, they're over, like, bu- bumping into each other with yeah. books. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, oh. Or they just had a make-out session behind the bookcases. See, I haven't found and that And then yet. we're going our separate ways so nobody knows what we just did that. I haven't seen that. Yo, you know what Yik Yak is? Or was? Say it again. Yik Yak? What's that? Uh, the, it's basically, like, an app that's based on your location that allows you to, like, post. Um, basically, like, little text posts. In that only people in that radius of where you posted it can see. Uh, it's very popular on like college campuses and stuff. Uh, it helps people like without even knowing anybody. Helps you like communicate things like, oh hey, there's free food here. Did somebody lose their keys here or something like that? Yeah. Um, Do you use it? I used to. Um, it kind of fell off, and then I quit using it. Um, this is like a couple years ago, but uh, I used to follow it pretty heavily back in like. I think I was just like super depressed back then and had a, I was like actually at school a lot um, and um, somebody was like trying to hook up with somebody in the library and I was like oh shit that's that somebody like answered and they like gave details and stuff and I was like oh shit okay I'm gonna go find these people like I just want to stumble upon this I thought you just do that through text because they they were strangers it's anonymous oh they were just trying to get some anonymous stuff <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. it's anonymous um okay. I, I forgot to mention that you get like a character or like a color and a character um i think it's the uh red canoe is the rarest or used to be the rarest um and that became like a meta joke and stuff is it like the highest level like what was... no like it's you they're randomly generated uh, but the red canoe was the most rare well i hope i get a red canoe <laughs> yeah like if you get the red canoe like you're like it's cool you know because i'm the king of yik yak it becomes like a myth almost uh i think it's like it's like a it's one that's like Should you just talk back to the red canoe <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i didn't i looked all over for those people like, and then I had to go to class. But I looked all over and didn't find them. The elusive, anonymous, strange. Yeah. Which, like, at the time, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I'm trying to, like, still have it. I'm probably not going to at this point. Trying to get my dick wet. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, that's been a, that's been kind of a uh, fantasy ever since I've, like, come to this library. I don't want to talk about your fantasies. This yeah, is not I know, what we were I know. It's, it's a thing, man. <laughs> Tell me you're, like, you know. Um, continue, let's go. Come on. Before we, before we get into it, come on. All right, Ghost World. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, like, I don't know. It's just a... That's a feeling that, like... Also, if you want to see the movie, we haven't told them who's in it. Oh, yeah. This, uh... This is the first major role of ScarJo. Scarlett Johansson. ScarJo. <laughs> Don't use the slang if you're just going to actually say her name. <laughs> um, but Scarlett Johansson is a, uh, she, this is her like breakout role. Yeah. She plays the more normal of the girls. Yeah. Who's actually able of adapting to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, Thora Birch plays Enid Coleslaw. Um, yeah. Who, I, I, dude, I think part of why I really... Steve Buscemi's in it as well? Yeah, Steve Buscemi's in it. There's uh, some dude that plays a... who in the book is a love interest but is just like a extra... is another character um, in the plot of the movie. Um, yeah. And uh, you sent me an article from Jezebel talking mm-hmm. about how the show's insensitive... the movie is insensitive to racial issues. Yeah. Which it is. Yeah, it is. And it, like, it bring it's almost like, when I'm reading the article, um, it started seeming like some of these things might have been purposeful in the movie. Um, but I think I was looking at it in terms of, like, you know, racial sensitivities at the time. Yeah. You know, when the movie was made and, like, you know, the demographic it appealed to. And the movie does, and I could imagine it being very racially insensitive. But, like... The history of of cinema made by white dudes, yeah, like, being racial insensitive to any yeah. any other oppressed group, yeah, from straight up racist to just like 
incredibly insensitive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's fucking common. That's the history of cinema, television, mu- music. Yeah. <laughs> what um, have you. But one of the things, though, for me is, like... And maybe it's just because I'm looking back at it. I also read to... plenty of articles like this going, yeah. this oh, whole thing is problematic, so it's just, um, like... But, like, what I sort of think about is, like, how... If we look at it as, like, just the depiction of a 90s teenager... Yeah. You know, it's pretty accurate. You know, she uses... You've seen the movie, right? Yeah. Okay. She, like... I don't remember it that well. I haven't okay. seen it too many. But Shimmy is a jazz buff. Yeah. And, co- like, a uh, record collector. And has, you know, a group of record collector friends. They have a bougie, sort of... Not bougie, but, like, a pretentious ass sort of party at his place. Um, and he collects old jazz era sort of memorabilia. Yeah. And it's basically just, like, a... Kind of like a white dude buying into black culture, but not getting yeah. black culture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he has this, and it's an actual restaurant. Um, yes, I know. That existed and yeah. eventually like changed. But um, I forget what it is. Kunstig. Oh, yeah. Fuck, dude. It's super easy. Um, I, for some reason, I kept like confusing it with um, Bojangles. For some reason. Bojangles is named after a dude. Mr. Bojangles? His, that was his that was the stage name, Bojangles. Oh, the dancer? Yeah. Oh, dude, I forget that Mr. Bojangles was an actual person, not just a yeah. character in that song. Yeah, it was you a real dude. About? It was a real dude. From yeah. what song? Mr. Bojangles. Who, by who? I, I think it's The Doors. I don't listen to The Doors enough. Oh, okay. It's a, we got we to gotta take a look at it. All right. I don't really care. It's, it's all right, man. There's a... It, it's a deep story about Mr. Bojangles. I'm only very occasionally into the doors, not that much, I don't, man. Dude, I don't remember if it's the doors or not. And there's a, it's probably going to be a disconnect. So I'm trying to get me to listen to a, to like most Rolling Stone songs. Just like, okay. this maybe some shit isn't for me. Well, that just like, I don't know. That that makes sense to you as a, or that makes sense to me seeing as you're like a, you know, you jerk off to the Beatles. So, um... You know. Your personal insult about the greatest band of all time um, does not matter. <laughs> hold on. Mr. Bojangles was written by Jerry Jeff Walker. So, and was recorded by the Nitty Di- the Nitty uh, da, 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 da. What? Uh, was covered by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is the version I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think that's it, man. I think it's the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. You don't even know your 70s bands. You over hey, here hey, 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 hey. I said I thought it was The Doors. Getting all mad because I don't want to listen to goddamn The Doors. <laughs> goddamn The Doors. Um, <coughs> but she... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon? Actually, I don't even hate The Doors. I just I just wanted to bother you. <laughs> so. Oh, I don't, I don't care. I understand why people hate The Doors. Um, I, um, so Enid sees, um, at Steve Buscemi's house, um, an old... It's a minstrel, like, poster. Yeah, it's literally just a minstrel character. And, um, there was a, I just watched a video, which is what made me look That's that's the thing that people do. People collect, like, old, like, racist memorabilia. Oh, yeah. It's kind I, I don't know how I feel about white guys. Yeah. Collecting racist memorabilia. Yeah. Unless, like, you're donating it to, like, a museum to, like, do a thing. Or to, like, discondone it. But, like... Discondone um, it? Discondone it, yeah. Oh, my God. I coined that phrase. Yeah, don't Um, use that. (laughs) The point about, like, the reason... Okay, so I said coined that phrase, knowing full and well that I just made a word up and not a phrase. That was levels, layers to the character. Um... So, like, um, <clears throat> like, um, what about, like, Nazi memorabilia? How do you feel about that? Like, yeah, that's, the, that's same... the ultimate form of, yeah. I'm not cool with that. Yeah, I mean, no, that's, no, like. I went from uncomfortable to just, like, don't do that. Like, we shouldn't even keep that intact. Yeah. But also, like, is it bad to, like, you know, erase it from Keep history? it in museums. Eh, even then, man. Yeah. Oh, no. the, do you gotta s- remind people. Yeah, it's like, do you, you gotta smash it? Or... 
Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a conundrum. Um, it's a you know what what do they call it a a, 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 a catch forty four? A uh, no. Okay. It's a catch twenty two. I know. I, I know. Um, I was trying to make me seem dumb. Uh, I have a hard time at that too, man. I'm too dumb to make myself look dumb. <laughs> um, so Enid finds this. Um, Coon's chicken sign and like uses it in an art project and it's very just like it's a very Elvis Presley like you know what I'm saying people it's, didn't like it people didn't like it later on but the teacher initially loved it yeah um, cause she like made this like bullshit racial answer to uh, some sort of like question that was posed in the art class and like it's very just like to me right Elvis really? Presley appropriated. Yeah, she appropriated it. She, she it was an art project, and she just found this and used it. It's not it. appropriate. It's not even black culture. It. culture. It's just a poster of of racism. It's not uh, okay. black culture. Okay, yeah, I get you. I get you. But she appropriated the sign. So she you used uh, the sign. Yeah, but she didn't even do art on the sign. Yeah, she just like gave the sign she turned the sign in as yeah a i guess that is appropriate yeah it's like yeah. not even doing any work um no. but like she like, and that's it as far as the racial stuff goes and they like there's some you see a lot of stuff where she kind of takes on yeah. black culture like she kind of like takes in uses black slang yeah. in a sort of ironic distance way yeah and I, I one of the one of the major things that i think made me relate to it so much is i did that as a kid as a teenager i sort of like picked up on black culture because it's black culture and it's you know hip-hop is now the biggest thing culture. yeah so you know i thought i mean back in my day I was cool, hip, and original, but... Oh, were you doing it... She was doing it ironically. Were you doing it ironically or legitimately? I was doing it legitimately, but I thought it was ironic that a white kid that looked like me was so into black culture. And I played into that joke. Of like, Alright, oh, then you were doing it ironically. Is that... Is that... Because, like... If you're aware that there's something funny about it, then you're doing it ironically. Okay. You can do it sincerely. You but, were doing it ironically. If you're aware that there's something funny about it, yeah, it's ironic. I was kind of okay. It, it's one of those things with like semantics of irony. Um, like you can think of irony as like an ironic joke, and you can think of it in terms of like a, how a joke would work. But like you're speaking of irony in like literal terms, which I have trouble grasping sometimes. Um, Irony is like a hard thing for me to define. Yeah, it's hard to define. Yeah, but like, um, if you have so like you have theater training that I don't, so you have like a little more like understanding of um, like oh, plot devices that. and stuff. <laughs> but um, so like, but like I was genuinely into it, but also you know I was still making racist jokes and shit and like. Not knowing what was wrong with it, not understanding. I mean, yeah, you were a teenage boy being an asshole. Most yeah. teenage boys think the the edgiest shit is funny. Yeah, that's what edge lords are. Yeah, I was an edge lord. Yeah, I was. I mean, so was I. Yeah, I'm not even gonna kid you. Oh yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I mean, there are different types of edge of teenage boy edge lord. Because you can either be the worst type, which is that you went to you went to four chan all the time. Okay. I was a I was personally a Tumblr kid. Really? Yes. Oh, same. Not not so much in high school, but actually, yeah, I was a Tumblr kid in high school. Yeah. I wasn't one of those Tumblr kids. What do you mean those? Oh, you weren't around for like, dude. I was in back in the day. Back like early Tumblr. Just explain. <laughs> okay, look, no, I gotta explain something about Tumblr culture. Um, back in the day. The unspoken rule of Tumblr, and this was everywhere, was like, yo, you don't really talk about Tumblr outside of Tumblr. Like, that was a real thing. No, no, I'm being genuine. That was a thing. People, like, that was a post that people reblogged the shit out of. I've never seen that in my life. Really? That was a major part of Tumblr culture that I was in. Tumblr was already pretty social justice-y by the time I was Oh, yeah. So maybe I did. Yeah, I'm talking like... Fuck, like 2010. Was it 4chan-y? <laughs> no, this was before 4chan-y. 
this was before like no it wasn't before 4chan. it wasn't before 4chan but it was like before tumblr got 4chan is what i'm trying to say it was hard for me to make up was words tumblr like 4chan is what i'm saying no i'm saying that but was tum- what was tumblr like then tumblr was a bunch of it was before the basics like the basics yeah. that were originally made fun of on tumblr took over tumblr but it was basically it was alternative girl basic it was like girls that listened to grimes and like the 70 that's still that's still with tumblr it's for the most part yeah but like um, it wasn't it was a little more underground it was a little more like oh i'm cool because i have tumblr and nobody else knows about this and i can go and have my own secret little life and secret friends on tumblr yeah because it was tumblr was such a deep internet i feel like most of the time when i'm on tumblr it's, i'm still finding girls who, who have like pictures of girls with like chokers of blood on their face or whatever yeah people kissing flowers i wish yeah. i was dead like yeah so. and like a general cynicism and suicidal thought yeah is, like genuinely mm. accepted choke me when I, we're having sex yeah so Make like me choke me till daddy. i'm dead yeah that sort of shit <laughs> cover me in like flowers yeah and lana del rey i don't know yeah <laughs> like, yeah that no lana the del whole rey lana del rey aesthetic yeah. yeah yeah um but, like, and this was back, like, um, when the basics were getting made fun of on top. Like, the plastics. The Heathers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which is funny because one of my, one of the only people I knew in real life that Pumpkin had. Pumpkin spice lattes. The, one of the only people I ever knew in real life that had Tumblr was a girl named Heather. Um, yeah. Which I get talk about. I knew a couple of girls in that school that had Named time. Heather? No. Oh, okay. Were there no Heathers? I may have knew a Heather. I knew a lot of Heathers. Cannot remember. We had so many Heathers, we had to like call them by their last name. There was a teacher named Heather. I don't know. Like Heather, like her last name was what? Heather? That's the, that's the type of what they do in the movie. You're making that up. What? You didn't have that many Call Heathers. them by their last names? Yeah. No, do we have like, there was like a Heather Harl... Um, oh, no, 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 I'm thinking of Megan's. Because I had, there were a bunch of Megan's um, in the same grade as me in elementary school. It was like Megan Cardwell, if Megan Archikavitz, Megan Miller, um, Megan... I would have done the Drake and Josh noise whenever I saw any of them. <laughs> I that, like, dude, this was before Drake and Josh. Megan! <laughs> I forget that we have like an age difference that can actually matter sometimes. It's like, you're 23, right? Yeah, I'm only a couple about years. About a year older. I'm about a year and a half older than yeah. you. Yeah. Wait, no, wait, no. You were born in 97, though, right? Yeah. I was born in 95. Yeah. So there's a two-year. Yeah. A legitimate two-year gap. Yeah. Actually, less than, a little less than, because you're only, you're like March. Yeah. So like, what, like a year and 10 months? Like two months shy of yeah. two years? Yeah. yeah. But like, March, right? Yes. Okay, March 21st? Yes. What's my birthday? Huh? It's my birthday. No, it isn't. No, I'm saying, what is my birthday? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> no, it's okay. I don't know anybody's. Yeah, no, I know. I, uh, I used to be one of those people that was, like, really good. A lot of people know my birthday, and I'm just like, I don't know, man. I'm one of those people that, like, can memorize people's birthdays. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm too selfish and narcissistic to do that. <laughs> At least you can admit it. That's, a, what, that's what matters. I'm a millennial, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, so, I don't know. Ghost World just... I, I think it's, like, this, this fucking bullshit nostalgia that kids like me have. Um, there's, like, this... I don't know what it is. Like, this weird identity with the 90s that you didn't grow up in. Yeah. Sounds I, like, because when I think of that movie, I think this movie is very Generation X. Yeah. This is, Which also inspired me to think of an idea of, that I want to do. Yeah, and where, something we are going to do. Yeah, where we list movies that we think are, like... Gen X. By nature. Typically gener, gen, Generation X. Like, representative of yeah. Gen X. Like um, a couple I've thought of already was, of course, Girls World. Mm-hmm. But, like, the number one, which is pretty much named whenever somebody is trying to define Generation X, Reality Bites. What is... Who's in Reality It's a romantic comedy where... Uh, what's her name? What's the mom on Stranger Things? 
Uh, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder plays a girl who uh, who has like who have to choose between two dudes, okay. two dudes, uh, Ben Stiller and Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke plays a very typical, prototypical like '90s uh, Generation X slacker. Who's Ethan Hawke? What else has Ethan Hawke been in? I'm trying to picture him. Um, you ever seen? Dang. Um, Boyhood. No. What's, was he one of the what? Did he? He's the dad in Boyhood. Uh, okay. Ethan um, Hawk. Ethan Hawk. Ethan. Bro, you short as shit. Oh, Shut up. Nobody, nobody caught the joke. I'm yeah. upset. Oh, that's oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. You've seen him and stuff. Yeah, I've seen him and stuff. Was that him in Reality Bites? I'm gonna that. <laughs> it could. I could be wrong. <laughs> That dude plays like a douchebag villain, right? Who? Yeah, uh, it's him. Ethan Hawk. He huh? plays like a douchebaggy villain a lot. Uh, not not that often. Oh yeah, I forgot he was in the first Purge. He was the dad in the first Purge oh, movie. Oh okay. I'm yeah. done. Yeah, that was him. Okay, that would have. Oddly he, enough, I kind of remember. He doesn't that. really play a type. Okay, but uh, continue with reality bites. He plays like a slacker yeah like, but like a cool one that has a leather yeah, jacket like back in the day, like, <laughs> and uh yeah. ben stiller plays the other love interest who's kind of a yuppie type oh okay wears a suit all the time and stuff yeah and um janine garofalo's in it oh okay then this is a very gen x movie yeah <laughs> hold on we gotta we Chapo's both already talked about generation x in their last in their latest episode really they're talking about the types Okay. And they're talking about how like Kirk Cobain's the prime example of a of what people typically consider a Generation X male. Yeah, sad and the white, uh, but, uh, but like sort of socially conscious at least. Yeah, and like you know wants to fight the man. But, but they didn't do mention much. how Janine Garofalo, at least to me. Yeah, she's Gen X. Like she's the face of Gen X to me. Yeah, like we have to take into account. Maybe maybe Courtney Love is probably. She is Gen X through yeah. and through. I, she's still Gen X. Like she reeks of Gen X. In in general. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she just looks dirty. All right, that's the aesthetic. Okay. Um, Shut up. <laughs> Don't defend an aesthetic. <laughs> I I will defend Courtney Love. Um, yeah, the the one she uh, put in court. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You don't buy into that, though, right? No. Okay. Um, so, like, j- we need to take into account how often Janine Garofalo appears in these movies because that matters on the ranking yeah. of how Gen X they are. Yeah. Do you think we should put a cap on it? Like, should we, like, compile, like, so many? They have to be in the 90s. <clears throat> yeah, no, So, just 1990s like, and 1999. But, like, I'm saying, like, do we put a cap on how many like or should we like do we need to make 10 and do a top 10 or like should we you know what i'm saying What's 10 happening? yeah 10 10 yeah should we, but i want i want some uh, uh honorable mentions i couldn't think of a term yeah honorable mentions. Yeah. um but also also i think it'd be a really cool idea to think of some movies not made in generation x that encapsulate sort of the same Gen X sort of vibes, or like channel it. Heather's, yeah, Heather's is very Gen X. Very, it's very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Well, first off, it, we, I mean the look of the movie is very eighties. Yeah, but like the feeling, very Gen. X. The general feeling of the film, yeah, yeah. it's very like ironic and yeah, like still preppy and angry. But, yeah, and yeah, and like I, I think that Winona Ryder is like. And the main, the main villain of the film legit wears a gigantic, like... Uh, Trench coat. Yeah, the entire yeah. film. And, like, I don't know, man. Uh, Christian Bale is very Gen X-y. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. We do need to take into account Gen X is not only 1990 to 99. No. Gen X includes, like, the 80s. But... Yeah. We want to talk about a specific 90s angst. Yeah. So we may need to, like... There's a, either we address it, we address that we're including only 90s movies yeah. in this Gen X thing, um, or we, like, broaden, or, like, we just, like, give our 
Cameron Crowe of Gen X. What about Cameron? Crow? I'll tell you about Cameron Crowe. You know him? I uh, know the name. The filmmaker behind Fast Ma- Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, Say yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, what's that movie with um, Tom Cruise and he's an agent? Show me the money. Oh, uh, fuck, man. With Cuba? Yeah. Um, for some reason, I've been saying Cuba. It's it's Cuba. Yeah, I know it's Cuba, but I said Cuba like like it was normal. I don't know what's up with that. That makes him sound like a... Cuba getting? Uh, the Mowgli to me. The Mowgli? Mowgli. I don't know what that is. The main character from Jungle Book. Cuba? Just the, summer, the way you said it. That's oh, it. Oh, Mowgli? Okay. Um, fuck. Shit. What's that? It's a... Is it like a name? Hmm? Is it like somebody's name? Who? The movie. Is it somebody's name? What? Oh, uh, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. 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 It's Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Um, I was trying... Uh, other movies he made, like... I'm, I'm trying... So, Fast Times at Richmond High is very 80s. Is it? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. Very 80s. Yeah. I, for some reason, I'm, like, think of it as a 70s movie. I, I think it's, like, because me and my dad bonded over Fast Times and also Dazed and Confused. So... That also, to me, is very... Generation X. Yeah, I've been... it's made by a member of the of that generation of the seventies. Huh? Of the seventies? Yeah. Yeah. He grew. He was a teenager in the seventies. Yeah, but he grew into Gen X. Yeah. Like he was alive. In Gen he X. also made Slacker. The same dude that made Days of Confusion made Slacker. Yeah. Which is also very. Yeah. Should we include that? But that's so underground. Not everyone I knows that. I haven't seen movie. Slacker. I, I, it's something I was needing to watch. But I've I seen it seen twice. It. It's all. It's. If you get, are if you like that dude's career, yeah, the guy who made that movie, slacker. yeah. For some reason, I I confuse Slacker with a uh, Gummo. No. Yeah, I know it's a weird one. Right? Maybe because both movies kind of wonder. Yeah, and they I think they look similar. And they don't really have like a, a, like visually. And they're also kind of defined by just the a feeling about mm-hmm. his generation and the people he grew up that <laughs> grew up with and around. Yeah. That the um, filmmaker's trying to impart. Yeah. Um, Gummo's 30. And, yeah. And Slacker's just kind of... I think Sla- I think they have like a similar film graininess to them. They're both indie, very indie films. Yeah, is like what you cheap. mean. Yeah. Like, maybe not cheap, but, but like, like under fun. Gummo's like legitimately... Uh, indie as fuck. And dirty. Yeah. Like it's... I think it's supposed to come across as dirty and grimy. Yeah, yeah, no. He's like real poor. Yeah. So. But like slacker is, well, yeah, people are poor and stuff. It's, it's more just about a bunch of Generation X slack, yeah. not all slacker types, but like hipsterish. Yeah. Types just kind of doing stuff. Yeah. Um, what about like? Um, Ooh, the cr- the craft is one. Oh yeah, yeah. Very Generation X movie. Yes. Fashion. Mm. Yo. Uh, I got one. What? I don't think you've seen this one. Say it. Hackers. I, is that the one with uh, Angelina Jolie? Yeah. And I think uh, I've seen it once what's his name? a long time ago. What's his name? Shaggy. Shaggy. Shaggy's in it? Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, Matthew Lillard. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of his last name. Uh, Matthew Lillard. Um, dude, I want to say... Uh, it's not Gen X, but it, it kind of it kind of hits it. But SLC Punk, the first one, only the first one. Yeah. Kind of hits that same sort of feel. But all in all, he still becomes a yuppie, and I think that defeats the message, you know. Yeah, but that was the ultimate fate of Generation X, so it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the ultimate fate of that. Oh, what about uh, Office Space, man? Huh? Office Space. Office Space. Well, it is ironic. It's a very ironic movie. Yeah. It's very uh, kind of just angry and bored by... Yeah, but is it Gen X? A real soup job, huh? Is it Gen X? Well, the guy who made Office Space also is, made Beavis and Butthead, which is the 
epitome of a. Can we include Do America? Yes. Actually, do I don't think I think Do America is beyond the list. What? I don't think we can include Do America. Why? I think it's unfair. Why? To include Do America. Say it. Why? Because it's so fucking good and so fucking Gen X. Yeah, then That it's... movie in its, like, conception. But to me, it doesn't, like, encapsulate Gen X as, like, a feeling. It just encapsulates Gen X just in general. Like, it's such a major pop culture force. To us, it's, it wasn't that, that to, to everybody. Yeah, but to me, man, I think it's unfair. I think I think Beavis and Butthead Do America is unfair to put in the Gen X list. Now, the way I'm starting to not think it should be on the list, and not because of the same reason you said it. Why? I think because it's it it's just a perfect movie for Beavis and Butthead, yeah. but not perfect for... It doesn't it's, really encapsulate the generation that much. I think it does, but in a way... Other than the fact that it features Beavis and Butthead, who were characters who really capture something about the generation? No. But. No. I have a bigger reason. Why? Um, I mean, think about... Okay, so you have the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And they do have a Bill Clinton parody in it. Remaking a... And they have the Bill Clinton parody in it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, like, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers redoes that Ohio Players song. Uh um, like, look at the actors involved in it, and look at, um, I mean, fucking, uh, Letterman, Letterman's Letterman, in it. yeah, that's what I was about to say, is, like, Letterman's in it, and he went uncredited, yeah, um, and then, like, also, like, you know, it's, uh, like, Rob Zombie has a, you know, scene where that cartoon comes through, and, like, when they trip on mescaline, and, um, uh, like you know, it's a. Right, you're right. It is very generation X. It's on the list. It's, uh, dude. I Why think it's not on the list? I think it's unfair. I think that Do America is like a standard we would have to measure these movies up against because I think Do America, I, I think it goes beyond, because it's not just the writing of the movie that makes that Gen X. It's the inclusion of all of like these celebrities and this pop culture from Gen X. I think that movie's too self-aware of Gen X. All right. Because, like, when you look at, like, uh, what are we saying? Like, um, Ghost World. Yes. When we say, like, Ghost World, it encapsulates a feeling of Gen X. And, yes, it does it aesthetically, but, like, not to the point where... Uh, we, the criteria is both aesthetics and, uh, and feeling. But, like, also writing. I would say that, like... Clerks is on the list. Oh, of course. Because it launched a career. Yeah. It is very 90s. The, the main characters are slackers. What about mall rats? Yeah. I think we have to fight. I would say the first... His first two movies. Okay. Uh... Ooh, I would say even early Tarantino. Oh, dude. Fucking Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Pulp Fiction's very Gen X. It's ironic. Yeah. It's uh, postmodern. Yeah, aesthetically, it's very '90s, very Gen X. Um, the dude, something about something about '50s like rock music, like old rock and roll in the '90s. But what about Reservoir Dogs? Nah. Yeah, I don't think it. It's a great movie. Yeah, but I don't it's, think it's Gen X it's compared not to Pulp Fiction. fiction. No. no, it's not. It's not ir- ironic enough. I mean, it does have like, yeah, it does have some ironic elements, like the whole the, these hitmen, yeah, criminals talking about pop culture scene at the very yeah. beginning and stuff yeah. like that. But it just doesn't feel, you know, I don't know. It feels like the generation before Gen X involved in Gen X because they're all older. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I don't think. Tarantino didn't have any other movies in the 90s, did he? Uh, yeah, he had uh, Jackie Brown. Oh, yeah. Is that 2000? That's like real late 80s, or late 90s. I don't think it's 2000, though. I think it's like right at it, though. Yeah. Like 98, 99. Yeah. Um, I think that like... Oh, he also, also had that segment of Four Rooms. Oh, okay. Natural Born Killers? He wrote that. Yeah, but... But they it? like rewrote it to shit. 
Wasn't it? That wasn't in the nineties, right? Yeah. Okay, but I, that's not Tarantino, though. We can't call that one Tarantino. Um, I mean, he did write the original version. But yeah, they rewrote it. Yeah. Um, so the I'm pointing at you. Um, so like with Pulp Fiction, like you kind of have anti heroes. I didn't. Have you said? Uh, have I said? Um, what's that movie? Got me with a spoon. Oh, uh, dude, Clueless. Clueless. Clueless, yeah. I think Clueless goes without saying. Yeah, aesthetically, obviously, the slang. Yeah. Just fucking... Everything. It's such a teen movie of the 90s. I think yeah. that it could not represent. Should we do categories? Or should we have something that hits all these things? You know what I'm saying? Like, things that movies need to hit. Dr- should we do dramas, comedies, teen movies? What? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I'm trying to, if we do a top list, if we do like a top number list, we would have to come up with criteria to grade it on. Yeah. Um, because not only do we... Mouthfeel. Yeah. <laughs> what was that term? What was that? Uh, remember something mouthfeel? I, like, told you that as a description once. I forgot. You remember? Oh, okay. Fucking, man. Can't even have fucking inside jokes with this man. What a friend. What a friend. I'm joking. I love you. Um, you, gotta, you gotta put it in your phone. <laughs> when I say funny things, put it in your phone. I said it, man. Fuck nah, you. I said it. <laughs> Sounds funny, so I said it. <laughs> um, fuck. Because, uh, like, I don't know, man. Think about it. Give me another one. Let's 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 hash these out a little bit. Uh, what really tank ma- you tank girl? Remember tank girl? Ooh. Based on a alternative Ooh. punk comic zine type comic yeah. uh, written by the guy who who helped co create gorillas. Oh yeah, 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 I forgot about that. <laughs> Just I can't stop laughing about how dude. Like, he just really looks like Lil' Romeo. He really looks like Lil' Romeo. Like, not in a bad way, just... Yeah, he kind of does. He just looks like Lil' Romeo. And it's it not does. the do-rag and, like, twisties combo, either. It's, like, It's the facially. face structure. Yeah. yeah. The do-rag and twisties doesn't help, though. He didn't have a do-rag and twisties. Who? Romeo or that dude? It's Romeo. Romeo War, Dude. It may have run a do rag, but I don't. He had twisties. Maybe I'm, he had. Yeah, big, braids. That dude had bigger dreads than twisties. I don't know. He didn't have just twisties. He had, like, um, evolved twisties. He had leveled up twisties. I'm trying to think of other movies. Um, I, I definitely think Tank Girl needs to be considered. There's a movie by Cameron Crowe that I haven't seen, but I've heard, read the Wikipedia description <laughs> called Singles. Okay. It's set in Seattle. Okay. Seattle's very 90s. Yeah, just anything involving that, that yeah. place. Um, yeah, Seattle, Washington at the height of the 90s grunge oh, okay. phenomenon. I didn't know about that. I just like fucking nerds. Um, it's okay. No, you're just being rude. <laughs> See how it feels, Javon? No, I'm not rude. <laughs> Okay, um, but like, I, there was one, oh, oh, I was going to bring up the fact that what this really makes me want, and why I really think I am really into making this movie, or making this list, what is because of Jonah Hill's new movie. Um, I don't know what it's called. I forget what it's called, but it's very 90s. It's like little kids, like 12 year old kids in the 90s, dude, and it's just like, uh, that's like, because I didn't get to experience that. I got to experience looking back at that, but I didn't get to experience it myself. So it's like, fuck, dude. Like, I'm looking. I mean, I'm going to see the movie. I'm not super excited about it. Why? I like Jonah Hill, but he's just. The just coming of age movies about white boy. Just yeah, coming of age in general is not yeah, my favorite thing. I get that. So, But for me, it's like. Man, these little these little dudes are wearing. I girl wish I could have been a '90s kid. Is yeah. a dream. I wish I could have skated in the '90s. Is a big thing, all right? You could have died off like Harmony Kareem's friends. I wish I could have died in like kids. You wanted to be one of the kids and kids. Kids, 
Kids. Dude, how can we forget kids? Kids. Oh my god. I ripped off someone's Supreme sticker today. How could I forget about kids? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad you actually get that and I don't have to explain it. Um, R.I.P. Harold Hunter. Um, kids. But, but uh, dude. Writ- written by Harmony Kareem and um, directed by Larry Clark, who was a guy who was known for, like, He's also made other films about skaters mm. doing destruct, self-destructive shit. No, that movie came out in the 2000s, didn't it? What? The one where the kid dies in the skate park. Kim Park? Beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure that that's, uh, not FDR, but that's, um, is that Burnside? What? In that movie? Where it's set? Yeah. I don't know. Is that, is that, like, oh man. Because I don't think it's FDR, it looked like Burnside. I, I don't know, man. Okay, all right. I'm gonna it have to says do that research on my own. The Salia, California. Oh, Kent Park is where it's set. Oh, okay. There's a there's a DIY park in California, like up that way. It's in LA though. Is it in LA? What the skate park? I'm thinking. Man, I don't know all these famous Kent <laughs> okay, skating sorry. places. Sorry, um, but like. Um, can you think of another like super 90s movie uh, like movie that evokes Gen X that wasn't made in Gen X that wasn't made yeah do you think like Pineapple Express or like Super Bad those are just stunner comedies man just made by somebody in Gen X made, yeah made by Gen Xers but no yeah okay so, like, there might be some, like... Gen Made by X. members of that group, that that's not... Yeah, uh, it doesn't necessarily like, you know, count. That doesn't... Um, I'm trying to think, like, there's definitely some movies that, you know, sort of, like, recall Gen X. That sort of, like, kind of... I don't know. I'm sorry. I can't think of any. But, uh... I don't know, dude. I'd argue Office Space. But I, I will say Do America can't be on this list now. Why not? I just, man, I just... <sighs> okay, how about this? We gotta come up with an animated one. That's an animated one. Come up with another one, though. That evokes the feeling of the yeah. generation? Yeah. They weren't allowing too many, like, animated movies for adults. There weren't that many. Uh, yeah. I mean, Pixar came out in the yeah, 90s, but... that wasn't Gen X. That was Us. Like, Toys R Us. Toys R Us. Toys... That was for the kids. Toy, what is a Toy Story? I couldn't think of Toy Story. for the children. <laughs> um, R.I.P. Jeffrey. <laughs> um, man, um... Yeah, because even, like, the kids' shows... The kids' shows we can't call... Gen X, you know? I think we... No. What were you going to say? Fudge this movie stuff. Let's just do media. That's very Gen X. Uh, can we do visuals? Yeah. Because I feel like... I, I don't we can just, say, we can just say music over and over again. Yeah, we, we can we talk music for fucking three years. Yeah. About We should talk the entire... Daria. Movie. Ooh, dude. And Daria and the show it comes from, Beavis and Butthead. Dude, I think we gotta separate them. I think Daria has... They, like, yes, they have different feelings, but... Uh, I think yeah. both are very gener- very genetic. Yeah. Well, she was the smart and self-aware, but irreverent teenager. Like, Daria was more representative of the people that were watching Beavis and Butthead. What? Daria was more like the kids that thought Beavis and Butthead. Oh, were they funny. got the joke of Beavis and yes. Butthead. They weren't just laughing at the stupidity. Yeah. And the Beavis and Butthead was just like just kind of making fun of the of the kid. Yeah, the stupid Gen X kid. Yeah. Which was real. Yeah, it was. That kid I think Beavis and Butthead may have made that kid worse. But it's okay. I don't think Beavis... And also The Simpsons, obviously. I don't think we... I think The Simpsons we can't even mention. Like, I think it goes... I think that's, like, goes without saying. Yeah, that goes without saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... it's 
it literally came out at the very beginning. Yeah, and defined that genetics. generation. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it it pretty much informed their sense of humor. Yeah, literally. You were raised in the nineties. Yeah, your sense of humor. Yeah, that is what gave you a sense of humor in the nineties. Was the Simpsons? Yeah, I would argue. Um, uh, Conan O'Brien's talk show. What about uh, Coco the dog? What was the dog's name? It wasn't Coco. Shine. Triumph? I don't know, Coco. Coco was a n- nickname that wasn't coined to like 2012 for Conan O'Brien. Yeah, I forgot about that. Also, I don't like that they call Conan Coco. I don't like that. I've never liked that. Yeah, it was something uh, that well, Tom Hanks said in an interview. <laughs> okay, now I kind of like it a little more. <laughs> Tom Hanks said it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen those jokes? Those like memes that are like, breaking news, Tom Hanks is still a nice guy. They're like allegedly a nice guy. <laughs> Which dude, we gotta burn suck. the world. We would have to burn the world. He Raise taught me the about world. the sixties and seventies, man. Cause you watch Forrest Gump? Yeah. In my American history yeah, class. So good. Like it's so sincere, but you can't argue that it's bad. No, nobody can say fucking no. it's there are some things and you My mom you my mom used quotes from that movie just as a casual thing. <laughs> stupid is what stupid does. No. Uh, Mama always said my apple was back. Okay, but uh There are more quotes in that movie than just Oh that. of course. Um But uh there are some things I because Forrest Gump did sorta on my mind, boy. <laughs> um, I, Forrest Gump kind of whitewashes history a little bit. At times? No, I wouldn't say that now. Eh, I don't know. There was something I read once. Oh, my God. I'm like, forgive me. Yeah, Bobby read all the, this movie was problematic articles, and then he'll cite every single movie and why that, uh, that makes the movie bad. <laughs> um... Can we call that Gen X? What? Forrest Gump. Yeah. I don't think it doesn't define that generation yeah. now. Yeah. It's just a really good movie that came out in the 90s. Yeah. And it's not even, because it's not about Gen X. It's about every generation leading up to Gen X. Oh, fuck this entire idea. Let's, t- <laughs> Let's just talk about stuff you like again. Okay. <laughs> I was just thinking of, I, was, I started thinking about Forrest Gump just now, and I'm just thinking, that's a movie that, Everybody loves. It's a yeah. universal crowd pleaser. Yeah. I don't there are anybody... movies from the 90s that a lot of people like that I'm just like, I don't get this. I don't like Titanic. Yeah. No. I don't I don't have four hours to be sad. Like, I don't so, have that shit. Like, I, I, can got do, my... I can do four hours of sadness. I just don't like the Man, sappy I my, shit. I got my own sadness for four hours that I need to focus on, right? Like, I don't give a shit about Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I... Did I get that right? What? Did I get that right? Yes. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I just... Hell yeah. What are Meta other, critique like, score just, like, broke. Universal probably. Because uh, other than Forrest Gump, there's also Back to the Future, for me, personally. What about E.T.? I like E.T. I'm just not crazy about it. Mm. Okay. Understandable. Uh, I want to say, like, a lot of Spielberg movies. For most people, yeah. I would say... That's Jaws, E.T. For other people. Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, Jurassic Park. Yeah. I don't know, I just, I've never been... I'm not. Really as I've grown really. older, I'm just... My my love for Spielberg is not... Yeah, I don't have... My, I like... Sins. I'm not a sentimental person. Yeah. So his whole sentimental... We didn't grow up in the time where we can be sentimental about yeah, Spielberg. We, yeah, I was born... Of a, I'm a millennial, so we're just a bunch of depressed and angry people. <laughs> like, I... I get like, half all the sappiness, man. Like, I like when people kind of, you know, sort of take influence from Spielberg. Yeah. He's a great it. filmmaker. Yeah. But no, that's I'm not denying it. his skill at making movies. Uh, okay, the... Saving Private Ryan's opening, I like that a lot. <laughs> best, The best thing Spielberg ever did... What? What? I'm actually forgetting the... Uh, name of what was it just the Animaniacs or did the Animaniacs come from something or was it just the Animaniacs he did uh, Tiny Toon Adventures first 
He produced those. He didn't make them. I know, but that still was very Spielberg. He was never attached to he was attached to it. They referenced him a lot. Yeah, they're, uh, he's attached to it. I'm not saying he isn't. I'm saying... Yeah. But he... His feeling isn't all over it. Okay. He's just referenced a lot, I guess. Okay. And because... Because he did executive produce all those yeah. shows. Um, Animaniacs, so. though. Oh, my God. That show's great. Yeah. For Gen X, too. Yeah. I would say that's a very Gen X show. I would say so myself. It's super ironic. Yeah. Super, super fast. Very pop culture reference heavy. Mm-hmm. What about what about Pinky and the, the Brain? Was though? the nineties like the first decade where pop culture reference became a big part of comedy? I think so. I would say because so. they did they referenced referencing stuff had been a part of comedy since yeah, dude, well like, before the end of the fifties they did that, but yeah, but like to the extent where the joke was, let's make fun of this pop culture thing. Yeah, th- that that was the nineties. Yeah, I think that like the Simpsons and, and SNL. Like SNL influencing all of Jin, all the people that were like older, like it influenced. I, would think, the, I think SNL influenced the entire generation of Gen X for sure. Yeah, and the generation beforehand. Yeah, the generation that wrote for Gen X. Yeah, um, I that's would say, the bo- boomers. Yeah, yeah. Were, were those boomers? Yeah. Okay, I get those lines blurred. Um, There's blurred lines. I know you. <laughs> Man, why didn't we figure? That's out what Brad that? Kavanaugh said. Anyways. Ooh. Why didn't we know that that song was about rape? Huh? Like... I wasn't paying attention. I, yeah, it was just kind of fun. It's kind of... first. It's catchy. Yeah. And, like, and yeah. then you learn about it, and it's now like, I can't fucking hear that song. I can't stand to hear that song. Yeah. I get angry when I see everybody singing along to it. Because I'm just like, I want to ruin it for y'all. Because it needs it. Also, we ripped off Marvin Gaye. You are so... <laughs> what? Am I wrong though? God, man, you are so. This is why people don't like SJWs. <laughs> the shit you just said. I gotta reel in this thing for you because I'll explain I, why yeah, it's problematic. Okay, that one needs to be ruined, all right? We need to wash that. We need to put that in the dirt of history. We need to represent that. Like, I mean, the man's career is not recovered, so. Yeah, which is good. And his wife divorced him. Yeah. Which is even better. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Mm. A bit much. Fuck that dude. That was a bit much, man. Okay. Um, but man, like, what about Pinky and the Brain, though? I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, but it's it's not as Generation X. No, I wouldn't say. No. Ducktales. Or like any of the animated shows. Ducktales is eighties. Oh yeah, fuck. Quack Pack. That's nineties, but it's. It... Yeah. Quick pack sucks though. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I do dig the theme song though. What other shows? Nickelodeon shows. Nickel Broad Rats. Yeah. Hey Arnold. But those aren't yeah. not very Generation X. They're just very good kid shows. Yeah, from Generation X. Yeah. Um, I would say Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Is a representation of Gen X. Yeah. For sure. Um, uh, the Avengers of Pete and Pete. See, I never actually watched that. I was it never aired. Yeah, same. But I've gone back and watched it. Yeah, and it's it's pretty good. I just I've never really been in the place. It's very surreal. Very oh, okay, is it Lynchy? No. Okay. Everything is surreal is Lynchy. I know, but I kind of get a Lynch vibe from it. It's just kind of yeah. It's kind of silly. Um, but is it Gen X? Yeah. It's, it's, even it's. It's a theme song. It's very Gen X. It's an alternative, mm. like, college rock song. Ooh. Uh, what about... Ooh, Big Lebowski. Yeah. I, I don't know if in movie, like, if in, like, it's... I think it had a major impact on Gen X. I, I don't know if... Yeah, I would say it's... It, I don't, they weren't trying to capture a feeling. Yeah. They were trying to do a... What I think the the Coens were doing is they got a very a, t- a type they probably noticed. It was a type that they knew a dude that was yeah. like the big Lebowski. Yeah, that you, an old hippie who never grew yeah. up essentially. But like, is still the dude. Like, yeah, he's still he's lived. You know. Yeah. Um, you know they like did a. Uh, That's why they were like all in their forties. 
you know they like did the coen brothers did like an interview for like an like a area rug magazine they did yeah because <laughs> of the big lebowski and like that was part that was one of the things that the we dude gotta go to lebowski fest man fuck yeah we do has yeah. it already passed it's definitely already passed yeah uh, it's a summer thing right yeah fuck dude wasn't that planned when you turned 21 too we were like oh yeah we gotta go fuck yeah it. Would you have worn a fucking uh, what robe with me and walked around and like real like if I had a robe, we could buy one. Yeah, we, we would have bought one. Yeah, the thrift store year the better. Yeah, too. You know, drink white Russians. I'll grow my beard out. White Russians good. Uh, it depends on how much vodka you put in them. Okay. Because I like black Russians. Actually, no, I don't like black Russians. I like racist. No. I like uh, Kahlua and coffee, huh. but black Russian, like, a black Russian is a white Russian without creamer, um, or milk, or what have you. A black <laughs> Russian, a white Russian, a creamer. I did it. <laughs> uh, um, Bars. <laughs> one rapper that Eminem was scared to touch. <laughs> <laughs> Come uh-huh. for me, Shady. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, what was that <laughs> universal crowd pleasers. What else? Yeah, um, I don't think the Big Lebowski is a universal crowd pleaser. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Everyone loves Big Lebowski. I don't think so, man. I, there are a lot it's of people. It's a festival. That, people don't get the Big Lebowski. Sorry. Somebody. Says I don't. They, I just heard a shush, and I had been loud in the sentence beforehand, so I just uh, assumed. Yeah. It could have not been us. I don't know. Um, but you know, but still, like I don't think the Big Lebowski is a universal crowd. I think it works. Though. I think a lot of people don't understand the Big Lebowski. Man. It doesn't. It doesn't even matter. It does. I don't think it's universal. I don't, I don't think it's on. If it's, we cannot put the Big Lebowski next to Back to the Future. Yeah, you can. A lot of people for love us, both movies. For us, yeah. I actually, I would put the Big Lebowski above Back to the. the There's back, a festival. For the Big Lebowski, man. So? That's the universal crowd pleaser. No, nah, dude. I don't think I don't think Big Lebowski's a universal crowd pleaser. Every every couple of months, I see an article about how great the Big Lebowski is, man. I, I don't think it's a crowd pleaser. I, I think that it's a great movie, and I think that it has a cult following, and I think a lot of people like it and enjoy it and talk about it. But I don't think it's like Back to the Future. I think that there's like an air of nostalgia that Back to the Future in like, sort of... There is an air to establish. And I don't think The Big Lebowski sort of has that. But I can still go back and watch Back to the Future and still love it. Like, every time. Yeah, but I feel like more... All in all, I think more people have seen... Do you think any Coen's Brothers movies can be considered a universal crowd pleaser? Or is it dang too weird? How many have you seen? I've seen... A handful. Same. Um, Raising Arizona, Lebowski, um, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, I know I've oh, um, No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Um, I know I've seen some more too, I just can't think of them. But I would argue that Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Might be. It's it's Big Lebowski, man. The Coen Brothers. People love that movie. Pleaser. But it's definitely no, it's definitely man. Big Lebowski. I think the Big Lebowski's How? too culty. It's, it's too culty. No, it's not. Yes, it is, man. But, oh, brother, I love Oh Brother Where at that. But it is definitely not as big as Big Lebowski. No, dude, I think that the general public, the mainstream, would be more apt to Oh Brother Where at that than the Big Lebowski. Oh, I think the Big Lebowski. We're currently is too only listing their comedies though. What? We're only listing Coen Brothers comedies. We should do their dramas, too. I don't think dramas can be necessarily huh? universal crowd pleasers. Really? Yeah, I would say that, like, depending on the level of drama. They made a TV show. All right. I just want to talk about the Coen Brothers because I love them. Okay. Uh, but And I'll share about their new uh, Western, Western movie show, whatever. I don't know what they're doing. For Netflix? No. Maybe. It's like a Western anthology film. Different stories in it. I don't know. It sounds like something, but I know, like, I don't know, man. I was about to say, uh, 
I might be getting confused with something else. All right. Well, you know, No Country for Old Men is considered like one of the greatest movies of all time. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Same with Fargo. Oh, fuck. I forget about Fargo. I've seen Fargo. I forgot that that was a Coen Brothers. They made a movie out of Fargo. I think, I think, I think the Coen Brothers do have a couple of universal crowd pleasers. Were you making a joke a second ago? What? When you said they made a movie out of Fargo? I said they I made a TV show. (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's why I was like, what, dude? Okay. Have you seen the TV show? No, I haven't. You should. It's on, it's on uh, Hulu. Oh, okay. It's fantastic. Oh. Man, uh, it's not made by them, but yeah, but they have like some small input. And it's got, it's filled with references and yeah. like allusions and a feeling mm-hmm. of s- stuff in the movies. Um, I just, uh, I, I just, I don't think The Big Lebowski is a crowd pleaser. It's one man. of the most quoted movies of all time, man. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Mm-mm. I am the like, come on, nah, dude, no. Nah. No. It is. Yes, it is. I, I don't think so. I think I, I think you're not looking at people like my parents. Who cares about your parents? They're old. Here's the thing, though. My dad loves it. Okay. My dad loves the Big Lebowski. Uh-huh. My mom doesn't get it at all. All right. Are you saying that the Coens are too... I'm saying the Big Lebowski. I'm not saying the Coens. I'm saying the Big Lebowski is not a universal crowd pleaser. I'm saying that it is. I think Brother O'Warthau is even weirder. I think it appeals to more of the general public. I don't think so, because it's a all right, all right, all right. The Big Lebowski is a take on like noir pulp stories, featured okay. set in like early '90s Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, but the route thou is the like the Odyssey, yeah. But set during the Great Depression, yeah. In the so, South, yeah. So, dude, I they're think both story. They're just like so. They're both like vacuums. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Like redressing of like old stories of like a certain types. Is the Big Lebowski a redressing or a sort of a thing on its own? I think it was based on a specific story. It's based on a dude. But for like different. No, not the main, not the character, the oh, story. Okay. Oh, like the being confused with another. Yeah. Yeah, that that is an archetypical thing, but like, but like, man, I just I I think that not right now. Here's the thing, dude. I think that we could walk to the next room and ask. <laughs> I would I would say that more people in that room have seen Oh Brother Where Art Thou than The Big Lebowski. All right. All right. The Big Lebowski. No way. No way. Dude, it has Clooney in it. Okay. But why would you think? <laughs> can, oh we look at, can we look at box office sales? Like opening week? That doesn't matter. Because the movie can still, like... I'm saying to reach a general Have public. a Wonderful Life. I mean, have a wonderful... <laughs> it's a Wonderful Life. Was kind of a bomb when it came out. Okay. And it's now considered the greatest Christmas movie. So, mm-hmm. we can't really do that. Uh, we would have to exclude Christmas movies. <laughs> uh, amongst general crowd pleasers? Yeah. What? I think there's too many. I think there's too many. No. They have to go in there. Uh, well, Home Alone, Home Alone Two specifically. Yeah, I don't even love Home Alone that much. I like Home Alone Two a lot more. Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah, I think Home Alone is like. Oh yeah, Big Lebowski was a was a disappointment at the box office. Oh yeah, received the mix of views, but it doesn't mean that it's considered. I don't think it's a universal. It is culty. I'm not lying that it's culty. I just don't it's... think it's a universal crowd pleaser. I think its cult status still keeps it kind of, you know, to the people, like to people like us. Like I think that there's like a sort of a demographic thing. It's based on the stories of. It's like loosely inspired. 
not based on any specific story, but loosely inspired by like Raymond Chandler. Mm-hmm. Like the person? Huh? The person? He was a he was a writer. Oh, he okay. wrote pulp stories, like oh, okay. detective yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, you, you know the Big Sleep. Yeah. He wrote stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of other universal crowd pleasers. I would say Home Alone is for sure one. Huh? Despite it being a Christmas movie, I would say Home Alone is a... Universal crowd pleaser? Oh, yeah. I don't really care for it. Maybe not Home Alone, but, like, the series, like, Home Alone 2. I'm trying to think of... All I can think of is A Wonderful Life when it comes to... Because I have personal Christmas favorite story? Christmas movies that I love. A Christmas Story? Yeah, you're right. That's also a universal one. To the point where channels stuff it down our throats every Christmas. Dude, fucking TBS plays it at, like for days. What's your favorite? My favorite Christmas well, actually, movie? Well, actually, we'll do Christmas st- stories that we consider our fa- personal favorites when Christmas comes around. Okay, I like that. Pretty soon. And also, we should do one for horror. Or Christmas stuff. Uh, you don't watch horror movies. Yeah, horror is not something I'm well versed in. I'd be interested in hearing yours, but like. We should do some uh, commentary for horror. Okay. Are you willing? As long as they're not super jump scary. All right. All right. Oh, you're just going to hide them now? You're going to huh? hide that aspect? No, they're... You're just going to not tell me about it and watch me cower in fear next to you? You know I'm going to pee in your lap, right? Jump on my lap. I will instinctively get to the point where if I get scared enough to piss myself, I will hop on you. And I will murder you. Okay. <laughs> We will watch these movies while my dick is out and pointed at you. So if I have to pee, it will go straight onto you. All right. And for the week right. beforehand, I'm gonna Spit eat shake. nothing but <laughs> I'm gonna eat nothing but asparagus and onions and coffee I'm and you. honey snacks. You ever eat honey snacks? Yeah. They make your piss smell weird. Not really. Really, dude? Honey snacks make my pee smell weird. Something wrong with you, man. <laughs> nah, dude. And Big Lebowski is definitely... I, just, I don't think so, man. I, no doubt. I love that movie. That's one of my favorites. I just don't think it's a universal one. What about Race in Arizona? As a universal crowd pleaser? No. No. I, I like it. I feel like if people, if more people have seen it, yeah, because it's a good movie. I think it, it's funny and I think it's approachable. It is quite approachable for yeah. them. Yeah, I don't think The Big Lebowski is as approachable. You ever heard of Barton Fink? Barton Fink? Yeah. What's that about? It's I don't like, I've heard of it. came out in the early 90s from yeah. Coen Brothers. Okay. It's like a set in like classic Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And he's like an offer. He's like a screenwriter in classic Hollywood. It's, Johnny Depp? No. Uh, fuck. I always get that one confused. He's got John Turturro who played uh, the Jesus yeah. in The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. He okay. plays the main character. Okay. Uh, John Goodman's in it. Uh, um, it's very Cohen's. Yeah. They love him. Who, John Goodman? Yeah. What's the last movie they did with him? Uh, was it The Big Lebowski? No. Mm-mm. In the 2000s. What? He was in O Brother Where Art Thou. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. You're he right. had a bit part, but he yeah. was... You're right. Um... They didn't do anything with, uh... They've been working a lot with Clooney these days. Yeah. He was... Who who directed, um... It's like part of the... It starts with a C series. They're like in a... It's like an address or something, but they're in a bunker. It's like John Goodman, some dude and some lady. John Goodman's like afraid of the outside world. There's like an apocalyptic thing oh, going on. Oh, uh... Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, it has something to do with Cloverfield. Yeah, it was actually it was it was completely disconnected from Cloverfield. Uh-huh. Then the producer J J Abrams, who directed and wrote Cloverfield, was yeah. like, "But what if you connected it to Cloverfield, <laughs> so I can make some kind of makeshift weird trilogy?" Which like it, it, he kind of forced the Cloverfield elements in there. It had nothing. Yeah, to Cloverfield there's himself. it's like one of because it's him. Because he's the one who made Cloverfield, he can easily do that. And like he didn't, he didn't make the movie. He just produced it. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's like a. And then, he, and then he made that movie that nobody liked. Uh, that was like a, the third sequel to Cloverfield on Netflix. Oh. Um, I think people would have made the connection. 
on Cloverfield Lane to Cloverfield. It, no, it didn't even include Cloverfield originally. No, I'm saying people probably would have tried to make that connection. I think it could have been possible. Without him mm-hmm. m- making him name it that? Uh, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Because it's mostly just like the story of like a bunch of people stuck in a bunker. Yeah. Like, it's just cabin fever. Yeah. Essentially. Um, what about like trains, planes, and automobiles? Universal crowd pleaser? Yeah. I like it. I don't love it. I, I think it checks some boxes, man. I think, I think it's one of those movies where it's like you can't go wrong with it. It might not be everybody's favorite, but it's like nobody's gonna. I've got weird it. stuff that I, I got my favorite, my personal favorite John Candy movie. Yeah. Is one where he's like a, a, soap opera writer or something, and he gets sucked into the soap opera. What? It's not a great comedy, but I liked it. What's this? I've not heard of this. I've never heard of that. I can't remember what it's called. What about uh, what is it? Yeah, no, it's John Candy, the Wild Frontier or whatever. Yeah. Or it doesn't have something to do with the West. Maybe. Because they're like... It sounds vaguely familiar. It's his last movie. Yeah. It was the last movie he was in before he passed. Is um, it The Great Outdoors? No. No. It's not The Great Outdoors. I would put The Great Outdoors up there, though. Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers. Is he in Blues Brothers? No, he's not, but... Yeah, that's considered... Yeah. I would say that's a universal crowd pleaser. SNL at its height. I need a, I wish I loved... More universal crowd pleasers because I'm realizing that I'm yeah. pretty ambivalent towards a lot of the movies that you just stated. Yeah. Only a few of these movies I would That's say. why I think The Big Lebowski is not one. Because I think that that is. My, I, my taste or two yeah. in particular. I, I think that that is a universal crowd pleaser amongst the crowd you're in. I would say that. I, I think that like your perspective is being pushed by your taste too much on this one. Yeah. I, that's why I think the Big Lebowski, dude. I really don't think the Big Lebowski is a universal crowd though. pleaser. I think if more people got it and if more people had seen it, because it is weird, and the and the Coens are known for this. It's weird. It's like weird. It's weird, <laughs> but like, and, and there's levels to it, and it's like this. It's about nothing, but it's about everything, and it's like, it's so good. It's good, but people don't get it because it's not as universal. There is no... Have you seen A Serious Man? What's that? It was like this dark comedy the Coens made uh-huh. about like this uh, set in the 60s about this Jewish like college professor uh-huh. who just bad shit starts happening to him. His wife leaves him. Just uh-huh. like all sorts of bad shit just, just happens to him. No. I don't know. I think it's like... Something to do with Judaism, I believe. Oh. Are they Jewish? Yeah. Oh, They're Cohen. The Cohen brothers. Cohen is a Jewish last name. Oh, okay. You're talking to a man that has just recently had class with Jewish people. No. Yeah. That he knows. Like, it, I know of two Jewish people now. Never really. I knew a girl who was half Jewish, but practiced, like, baptism or some shit. Yeah. Um, but I never knew any, like, actively Jewish people until now. It also includes, like, some weird stuff. Like, there's a hurricane coming at the... Not a hurricane, a... Uh... <laughs> What's it called? We, we just had two different signals, symbols for this. <laughs> what was mine, then? You did this. Oh, I did it upwards? Yeah. You did it downwards? Yeah. <laughs> Hand of God. <laughs> <laughs> Digging for gold. Yeah. What is it? What's What's it called? I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not, I want you to like figure this one out. Um. Okay. What? <laughs> it's only funny to us, but it's, what is it called? Stop. It's not a hurricane. Oh, dude, you know it. It's not hard. Air spin. <laughs> That's a sonic move, man. Tornado. That's it. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) Dude, I smoked three blunts last week. 
Oh my god. Yeah, it yeah. It's still working its way out. We're at one forty, man. We should probably end it. Yeah. A bit long. Yeah. Hey babe, take a walk on the long side. Alright. Oh. Okay. This has been 2004 Podcast Odyssey. The Daddy Podcast Odyssey. Tell for the Podcast Odyssey. Yeah. Bye bye. Oh, 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 wait, wait. Uh, listen to our Patreon episodes. Oh, yeah. Okay? The episodes. We do commentaries yeah. of stuff like Last Jedi. Yeah. And the first three episodes of Sopranos. Yeah. Um, well, first two. First two? We did, the, we did three. We did three, but are we going to put... Huh? I think we should put one on YouTube. All right. We'll, we'll see. We'll tease them. Yeah. We'll tease them. What else did we do? We'll cock tease them. Um, Didn't we do uh, that other movie? Who Marries oh, yeah. Mary? Someone Mary Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are all on the Patreon. Yeah. Go there, and for $1, or whatever you feel like giving... Yeah, you we get will appreciate to listen it. to the episodes. Yo, if you give us enough money, we will personally get you off. Uh, of the charges, we'll we'll act as your lawyers. No sex jokes. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll, just trying to we're just trying to yeah. help people. We'll drop the charges. Yeah, that that we we, pre- we put against you. <laughs> we'll be lawyers for Bobby's case that you have sued him for. Um, Why are you confusing yourself? <laughs> all right. I'm confused. Goodbye. I've got a cross eye. Bye bye.